Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Nerdan Tokas is training us on how to accomplish our goals by being aware of our purpose and passion and creating good habits. Nerdan, I have a few questions that will help us get to know you, and uh, not as a trainer, but more as a person, as a human being. My first question is this, uh, what's the best decision that you have ever made? The best decision I've ever made. I think I made that decision when I first found my passion. That is why when we talk about tonight, finding your passion can be a milestone in your lives if you find the right passion. And my passion was starting my own business starting my own business after a long corporate life. That must Just, have been quite a difference. It was quite a bit different. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a different playground. Yep, <laughs> Let's yep, call it, it that way. It is indeed. Now, mm -hmm. my second question is, uh, what was the biggest challenge you've ever had to overcome? Well, that is related with your first question. As you mentioned, it is very hard after 20 plus years being in a large organization, doing your work and now coming out to the world, which is totally different and entrepreneurship. And the habits are different, which we're gonna talk tonight. The behaviors are different. So what I used to do, now it is totally different. So I think that was a challenge to have that transition. That is why I'm so passionate about having these sessions with entrepreneurs, explaining them. It is not easy to switch behaviors, to create new habits. But if you follow a uh, methodology, then it is possible. And if you're living your passion, you're the luckiest. And you're going to teach us how to uh, start uh... Uh, defining and adopting new habits, right? Yes, we will. Yes, yeah, we will do that. Looking forward mm -hmm. to that. I've, I've already half abandoned my addiction to chocolate in anticipation of you teaching me a new good habit. Yes, yes, <clears throat> we'll do that. Third question. What is your favorite way of relaxing? My favorite way of relaxing is I meditate uh, a lot. It was one habit that I didn't have when <clears throat> I first started my business but I at some points I got challenged and I struggled so much at the beginning I had to find a way out and I just started doing uh, meditation it helps me so much uh, before going to bed in the morning charging up and then shutting down at nights before I go to bed Beautiful. I balance my life in that way yeah that sounds like a great habit I've actually tried, but I keep falling asleep when I do that. So maybe that's, okay. that's <laughs> another good habit you can teach. If you can't sleep, that's a good thing. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. That's why I had to do that. So uh, that is nice. That participants, is nice. would you please type any questions you've got into the chat? And I'll pose them to Nerdan during her workshop. Now, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this uh, workshop anyway in a few hours. But uh, I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Nordan, are you ready to wow us with your words of wisdom? Yes, I am. And I'm passing the admission to you, if anybody back, comes back in. Back to me. Back to you. The stage is yours. The digital stage is yours. Go rock it. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. First, Roger, thank you for giving me this opportunity. This is awesome. I love being here with you and talking about a topic that is my passion. So we, I will be sharing that with you. One thing maybe will help all of us during the session, and I do this in the opening of any virtual uh, training or uh, speaking, let's forget about what we did during the day with the conversation we had with the client, or if we were upset about something, they're all past now. So what we want to do now being in the present, be with me tonight for almost an hour and I will be with you. 
But to be able to do that, let's take a deep breath. That's how we start. Close your eyes and take a, just a deep breath, as deep as you can get that breathing in. And let it go. This hour is a treat for you. You will be only sitting there listening and talking to yourself. Let's not miss this opportunity and put the cell phone away, everything that will distract you for about an hour for my speaking. And then uh, you have the rest of the agenda too. If we're okay with that, if we're ready to be in the moment, in present, I'll get going. We're all good? Nerdan, can you uh, raise your, uh your webcam a little bit because right now the top of your head is chopped off is it better yep that, that, now it's too much uh, come a little closer there a little little further back that's perfect now perfect thank you benim kızım isterse dağları devirir in turkish if she wants my daughter can break down the mountains. Often when it comes to confidence, the key is not we do, but the things we say to ourselves. When I was 10 years old, I heard these words from my dad the first time. If she wants, my daughter can break down the mountains. I was in the study hall of an American boarding school back in Turkey that I just started, and I was reading the first letter I received from dad after I left home. I still remember the big smile, of course, mixed with some tears coming down on my cheeks. In a school year, I didn't have much chance to see my family other than during long holidays and summer vacations. We were in different cities. That was why dad was sending me a letter every week. Each letter, around eight, nine pages to keep connected. What a feeling that was, opening those letters. And I remember myself sometimes just smelling them before I put them in the envelope. Yes, those were the times when we used pen and paper to write to each other. And those were the times when we had the dial on the phone to make a call. And even for long distance calls, we had to get on the call the operator first to get on the calling list. Different times. In his letters, dad talked about everything that happened during the week. What my mom did, my little sister said, who came to visit, and sometimes even about his little patients came to his clinic. But in every letter, he finished with the same words. If she wants, my daughter can break down the mountains. The more I read them, the more I believed. Years passed. I finished high school, graduated from the university, got my engineering degree. But whenever I lost my confidence, doubted myself, wanted support, I remembered his words. The power of my father's words really framed the world and how I found my place in it. My dad's words gave me the confidence to push my limits so I could reach my full potential. 20 years ago, I made a tough decision and put my life in seven suitcases and came to Canada from Istanbul, Turkey with my 10-year-old daughter. A night before we got on the plane, I just looked down the hallway and saw seven suitcases all packed and ready to go. <sighs> Took a deep breath and remembered the same words, if she wants she can break down the mountains. All seven suitcases has something special in them. I will not gonna tell you the seven suitcase story. It is a one big story by itself, but I'm going to mention you two significant ones. The first one is the blue suitcase. Bigger than all the other suitcases. It was full of dreams, passion, my purpose, 
plans for my new life in Canada, excitement. And the other one was a black suitcase. It was a different one, smaller than the blue one, but one wheel was broken. It came like that out of the plane. And the black suitcase, this one was full of fear. Today, I still have my blue suitcase in my life, my goals, dreams, passion, purpose, my confidence, and my dad's words in it. However, from time to time, I still have fear. But the difference is, it is not a suitcase anymore. It is a black briefcase. When I open it, I see fear, doubts, limiting conversations, uncertainty, and think about the same words that will bring my confidence back. If my daughter wants, she can bring down the mountains. Now, take a minute. Think about your blue and black suitcases. Do you have one? Which one is bigger? And when you have the black suitcase open, what do you say? What do you think before you close it? Why don't you just share it with us in the chat? Do you have blue and black suitcases? And what do you do with them? Which one is bigger? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dylan. A lot of people are very certain on their path ahead in identifying their passion. How to be sure on this path? We have a process for that and we're gonna come for that. Thank you for asking. Ramona, yes, we do have those uh, suitcases. Yeah, we do. Thank you. After working for more than 20 years in the corporate world, one day, the day I expected it the least, my corporate life ended. I had no control over the situation because during the corporate lives, similar types of unexpected situations can occur as their life cycle. But this didn't make the situation less shocking, hurtful, or scary, that's for sure. It felt, when it happened, it felt as if somebody pushed me out of a car that is going 100 kilometers an hour. That is how I felt. I got injured pretty bad. And that was the time I felt the power of dad's words again. Shine a light in your, on your life in the moments of chaos so you can discover the path to get up on your feet again. And I did that. I paused, stayed quiet for a while. I restored my balance and energy find clarity and increase my awareness. Awareness is the magic word. I chose to push myself up, heal my wounds, and started walking again and then running. It's the power of the words. Got my confidence and passion back. What helped me as I went through my journey? Let's get into this self-awareness part. Of course, self-awareness helped me. Self-awareness is not only being aware of your emotions and understanding others' emotions. It is, but on the other side, it is to understand your passion and purpose, both in your personal and business, professional life. And the more I thought about this, the more I discovered things about myself. When I had my doubts and limiting thoughts, it was always my dad's words just push me. But there are a couple questions I ask myself. Now I'm going to share my screen with you. You will see those questions to see what to figure out what you really want. Let me share my screen here. Okay. I'll put this in here. There we go. Show me a thumb, thumbs up when you see my screen. We're not seeing your screen, Nerdan. Oh, yeah, we are now. Okay. So these 
are the questions that will help you to find your passion and purpose? Mm -hmm. They are not easy questions. They are deep thinking. It is really your self-assessments, your self-analysis. What are my values? What do I really want to stand for? And this one that I have bolded is a key question that we're going to use it when we go back to habit building, commit making commitments. Who is the person I want to become? What is my true potential? Are there any limiting thoughts, limiting uh, ideas that I have that I am, that I am um, stopping myself? When you ask these questions, you have to have that deep thinking. You should be honest with yourself. You should, it, it takes a while. It is not just sitting and answering these questions. It took me around two and a half months to figure this out. I kept thinking, I kept writing. Writing always helps. When you put your thoughts on a piece of paper, they become alive. You read them again. You think about it again. So these are the things that I really paid attention. And this is a big part of self-awareness. Any questions up to here? No, no questions. Okay. Just put your questions when you have them. And we're going to uh, go through them. And these are the questions, to be honest, that brought me today. And I, I just figured out human performance consulting is my work and how I figured those out. As an industrial engineer, let me stop sharing. I like seeing people more than the, the slides. As an, um, okay. As an industrial engineer and a learning and development professional during all those 20 plus years in large corporations, it always bothered me how we could waste human performance. It is the most significant resource that we have, but we ignored removing the barriers to help people bring out their best and how we couldn't help them gain their confidence, bring that potential, that high performance out. There you go. Being able to help to bring out all that potential in people is my passion. When this happens, when I can do this, helping people exceed the exp their performance, work them with confidence and have motivation and helping organizations achieve their goals is my purpose. So you start with your passion. What do you really want to do? What, what is the meaning of it? And then from there, the result that is attached to that passion is really your purpose. So you may say, okay, you're done, fine and dandy, but how did you know you found your passion and purpose? Brilliant question. It changes for everyone. It's not same, it cannot be same for everybody. It hit me emotionally, mentally, and physically when I found it. I thought about this for a long time. I just asked the questions to myself. What is the biggest, the most important thing for me? And when you find it, that feeling, that big relief you have, that happiness you have. I said to my husband, that's it. I said, I found it. And he said, what did you find? I said, I found my passion. He had a smile on his face, I still remember. But that is something excites you so much, you just want to get going right away. I had a hard time sitting and planning. I hardly waited to get started. I started writing my ideas. And the more I wrote, the greater relief I felt. And it was the right thing. I knew it. Now, a question for you in the chat. What makes you happy, gets excited, motivated, makes you get up every morning with curiosity and with that excitement? We're all entrepreneurs. And I know we all have our passions and purpose because we're doing our own business and we wouldn't do it otherwise. But what is that one thing that really fuels you, gives you all the energy? Write it in the chat. I would love to see that. 
helping others. Beautiful, Ramona. Beautiful passion. Taking action that changes the world. Absolutely. These are all the things that really get you going. I want to see a little bit more. Creating value. Mehdi, beautiful. Yes. Business. Business. Also reading. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's passion is different. Being alive. I love to serve others and to see the best come out of others. We share the same passion, I think, Nona. Gardening. Beautiful. Having a beautiful garden and growing those beautiful flowers, creating, helping us, making people smile, encouraging and uplifting others. Beautiful answers. Creating homes that can people be proud of. So important. Working with people to improve their lives. Storytelling, creative art that influence the world. Helping others. Thank you for sharing. Each of them are great passion and purpose. And I got goosebumps when I was reading. It is so touching. Serving people and making people feel good about themselves. That confidence. When you can give that confidence, just imagine how much you can change in a person's life. Unbelievable. Solving problems using creativity. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing amazing. So that is why passion purpose is important because that gets us going. That is our fuel. And although we know it, repeating it and saying it out loud just creates even more awareness in our head. Okay. So now you have your passion and pur purpose. I'm going to move to the next stage in self-awareness. Now you're aware of your per passion and purpose. Beautiful. The next stage is though, although you wouldn't have your passion and purpose, now you're saying, okay, I have this. I want to do this. You need another awareness. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my limitations that I need to work on, strengthen so I can get to my purpose? Your second step in self-awareness. Understanding your strengths, your limitations, and what should you do more to get going to reach your purpose. Think of a toolbox. When I say your toolbox, it is maybe the toolbox in your garage or in your home, but this toolbox has your skills, your knowledge, your experience, your certifications, your educations in it that type of a toolbox. So when you think about your, uh, assess your skills and knowledge, look at the toolbox, what you have. Are you missing any tools? Do you need to add more to your toolbox or do you need to polish some of the tools in your toolbox? These are all the things you already build up, but is there anything missing? That is the type of assessment, self-awareness we need to do. Of course, you may need to, for example, in my case, when I decided to go with human performance uh, improvement consulting, I had to complete a series of certification programs. I had to read certain books. I, had, I wanted to attend certain webinars and listen to the uh, people in this field and just have my perspective a little bit wider. So all these things are what you need to add to get from point A to point B. Of course, the, the resources are limited. Your time is limited, budgets are limited. But if you know what you need to do, then you can make a priority list. These are the things I must do. These are the things nice to have, I can do later on. So you can set up your strategy around this, build a strategy, and now you have your to-do list, how to get there. Timing, planning, all that good stuff, and you will fill the strategy. You have a purpose, you have the passion, but the road 
may not be that smooth still. And when you feel lost, discouraged, scared, I want you to do two things. Look at the screen. I'm sharing it. I want you to take two post-its. Write on one of them, I am passionate about, write your passion. And then in the second one, please write my dad's words. I, if I want to, if I, can, if I want, I can break down the mountains. Not all at once, but rock by rock. Two post-its, write these down and put it on your wall in your office where you see every day before you start working. And read it to yourself. Words make a difference. Say these to yourself. I'm passionate about your passion. And my purpose is remind yourself because as the stress gets more, as you get into deeper work-related things, we sometimes forget the root of it. Where is this all coming from? Why am I doing what I'm doing? You cannot lose your purpose. And passion is your fuel. And the other one will get you going like it did me since I was 10, get you going and will give you that confidence. Okay, so those post-its are on your board. Up to this point, we just pushed ourselves, asked our questions, find our passion and purpose. And we just decided what kind of a person we want to become. And you assessed your skills, fixed your toolbox, and you pre prepared your list, to-do list, where you want to go, and you have your strategy. Is this enough though? Is this enough? Yes, no, maybe so. Actually, it is not enough. Or actually, it is not enough. That's right, Ramona, it is not. We need more. We definitely need more. When we want to achieve results, think about yourself. When you want to get to the place where your passion and purpose tell you to go, we always think about the results, the last result. But to get to that result, we need to have systems in between in place, which we will build and make them work effectively. To be able to work, make those systems work effectively, we need to create new habits because it's a change. Otherwise the systems will collapse and we cannot keep them going without the new habits created. When I say building systems, I'm talking about from my world, and I'm sure you have the same in your world, it is a CRM system, just keeping track of your clients, keeping track of your calls, or somebody you met and you're adding it to the list, or your accounting system, or your social media system, our administrative work we need to do. I mean, when you're a small business owner and when you are really yourself doing the work and doing the selling, doing the accounting, it is, it is tough. It is tough. That is why it has to be so systematically set up. We need to do all those things. And maybe sometimes someone else is helping us with part of it or we're using a software, but still we need to keep an eye on them. I just want to ask, is there does, did anyone try to write a book or writing it now? Anything that a long-term commitment? Anybody? Yeah, you wrote a book, Mehdi, awesome. So when you and I have a big respect and appreciation for authors, it is such a big commitment, it is huge. It is an ongoing, consistent commitment. Until you finish it, you keep doing, doing. You're writing now, Dylan, awesome. Ed, you wrote it too. Beautiful, good for you, good for you. Congratulations, that's a big 
achievement. And, but how did you write it? What kept you going? What kind of a commitment you made? Maybe you said, I'm going to write three pages every day, or I can't do during the week, but on the weekend, I'm going to write 10 pages. But to be able to finish that book, you have to be so consistent and regular. Right? I'm going to give an example from my client. A, a client of mine went through the same process when she, decide, when she decided to um, start her own business, got through the steps like we did, passion, purpose, look at the toolbox, make your to-do list, what you need to do, put your systems in place. She has them at all. But it really didn't work exactly the way she wanted. Because what she was missing was, like I mentioned at the beginning when I was answering Roger's question, she didn't have the habits to use those systems because she was not used to it. So she couldn't use any of that system she set up efficiently. Small habits make a significant change. Very small, tiny habits. Small improvements every day will make a difference. Because think about it. I mean, if nothing changes, nothing is going to change. I will tell you uh, about um, uh, stat, uh, statistics that hit me hard when I read uh, James Clear's Atomic Habits book a couple of years ago. The effect of small habit compound over time. So listen to this. If you can get 1% better each day, just a little bit, you'll end up with results that are nearly 37 times better after a year. Can you imagine that? One person getting better each day will make it 37 times better after a year. That is so significant. And the other side of it, similarly, but on the negative side, if we make a 1% error every day, what can they be? Like a poor decision, tiny mistakes, or little excuses not to do things. Um, the uh, Brian's, um, Brian Tracy's book, Eating the Frog. I don't know if anybody read that. But if we really avoid eating that frog, it is the hardest thing you really don't want to do. So you push it aside, so you push it aside. And then Brian Tracy says, eat the frog first. So like those kind of mistakes, they will compound into, they will compound into Jordan, can you unmute, please? Is it OK now? Yes, good now. I, oh. I, I accidentally did to you what you did. Oh, you, hey, that's a payback or what? That's a payback or what? <laughs> Revenge is sweet. Where did you lose me? I don't know. <laughs> uh, about a sentence ago. Okay, so the plane route, maybe I'm going to take it from there. So when you shift a plane's route, a, a route, a few degrees, the aircraft will end up landing totally a different place. So it is the same idea. How money multiplies in compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. Because it's a habit now. When it becomes a habit, the brain doesn't spend that much energy to pay attention to that habit. Now it is automatic. But the more you do it, the more it just the effect of it compounds. So guess what? That is why it is important to build good habits and get away from the bad ones. We do things, we fail, we learn from it, and do differently. Actually, what you're doing is you are understanding that bad habit is not serving you, you failed, and you're changing it. 
And that is how we reduce our bad habits and add good ones, more good ones. And after five, 10 years, you can see that the value of good habits and the cost of bad habits is significant when you look back. We may not see the results right away that day in a daily life, but we ignore those small habits and we say, what difference can it make? We shouldn't say that. It's like going to the gym. When you go to the gym to build your muscles, does it build, is it built overnight? Or is it built in a week? I'm not a gym person, but the people who go to the gym, I see all our kids are just religiously going to that gym when they're open. And, but it takes a lot of work to build that muscle. So the same with the habit. When we look at the questions at the beginning about passion and purpose, we want, we, I just said, this question is critical. Who do you want to become? Because habits create the person we want to become. When you build new habits, you need to remember the type of the person you want to become. And by building those habits and proving yourself, hey, I did this piece, those small wins, that will increase your confidence and motivation to build even to work more, even better habits. Because now you know you can do it. Any questions up to here I can take at this point? No questions. Rory Wadden book is great. Take the stairs. Thank you, Nona. I haven't read it. Great book, Atomic Habits. So you had it, Miguel. That is awesome. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, book. I would highly recommend uh, if you're interested in habit building in more detail. So, okay. Change your habits, change your life. True, because you are becoming a different person. Okay, wonderful. Habits can help you achieve things. But habits are not about having things. It is about becoming someone. It is way more than things. So keep that, keep that in mind. We repeat good business practices, but we do not see the results right away. And in my client case, let's go back to that example. She put the system in place because one biggest thing she struggled was her social media. And she hired a student, her budget was limited, but um, in uh, community colleges, there are beautiful programs that uh, educate young people attending the program about social media, marketing, and all that video. And she said, okay, I have a limited budget, but I need help. So she hired a student from the marketing program from the uh, community college over here. She set up a schedule for different social media activities. She started recording her videos, writing her blogs, two times on LinkedIn, three times on Facebook. There are all these stats that uh, people follow. And she, she started doing that. She managed the student properly. They were working fine. She had a system. But as she started getting upset because things were not changing much immediately, guess what happened? she slid back to her old habit. When we do not see the transformation right away, then we have the great tendency to give up trying and slide back to our old habits. Productivity compounds when we start building good habits. How would that happen? as we explained, because then you will have your systems in place. You're gonna use your CRM system effectively. You're gonna do your accounting on time. You're gonna do your social media uh, regularly. And when you start that uh, system, now you're not spending time here and there, but it is in a very structured format. And of course, it will increase your productivity. And the time you're spending on these little things will get less and less because you have a schedule program now and you're going to have more time to build your business, to grow your business. And when you have good habits, knowledge compounds. How does that happen? Because commitment to lifelong learning is transformative. 
Learning one idea wouldn't make you genius, but if you keep doing that learning, your knowledge will compound. Relationships will compound too. So the more you help others, the better relationships, just build those habits to um, have strong relationships, to uh, connect with people. It will bring you more clients and it will make your life easier and more fun. So there is an activity for you. Think about one behavior. This is, this is important and I really want you to record this on your uh, notepad or something because we're gonna come back to this with the commitment. Think about one behavior related to your business that you know it pulls you back and you cannot delete the old habit to break the loop. And imagine if you could change that one habit, what big of a difference it would make. Think about it. What would that one old behavior, one uh, not useful behavior, I don't like them calling bad behaviors, but not useful for your business. Think about one habit you have that pulls you back. And please write it down. You would love to change that because it would make such a big impact on your business, but you cannot. For some reason, you're stuck with it and you just keep doing it. Everybody's kind of, everybody has a one poor habit. We all recorded it. Good, because we're gonna need this later. If you need a little bit more time, I can give you a couple more seconds. Yeah, Proc procrastination, YouTube, entertainment. <laughs> I love procrastination too. Yes, we don't we all. Don't we have times that we love that? Social media, undisciplined eating. Yes, Roger. Yeah, these are the things that you want to change. And it's not that hard to change these if you know the way. Going to bed too late. Oh, that can make me sick, Ramona. That can make me sick. Mine is time, mismanagement, and my mind goes in different directions. Yeah. They're calling it, my mind does that too. It goes all the way. And they call it one day, uh, I was working with my meditation coach and she said, you have a monkey mind. That is apparently what it is called when your mind is just all over the place jumping. Get out of fo focus with different ideas. When is it procrastination or too early to call it a risk? Is this, is this a question or? Dylan, can you clarify? Yes. Well, <laughs> it all depends. I mean, if you are seeing the result of that procrastination as a negative impact, it's time to stop that. Everybody's uh, limits are different. Maybe somebody wants to get ready for a meeting a week ago, a week before the meeting, so they feel confident about that. Some people can wait till the last minute but they can, they can do it. So it is all your skills and how you feel more confident, comfortable with it. Indecisiveness. My wife tells me. In addition, thinking about past mistakes too much. Wow, that really pulls you back. You need to let that go. Because every mistake is a learning if you do not repeat it. That's how we take it, right? Not doing my paperwork. Yes, it is a big thing. Doing, working on non-priorities. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. You have your uh, poor habits. Awesome. Now I'm going to continue and we're going to come back to this. Thank you for sharing. You're awesome. You're such an attentive uh, group of people. What is the definition of commitment for you? What is the definition of commitment for you? For me, it is promising. Promising to myself. What do you think commitment is about? What is it about?
not making a decision with you. Okay. Anybody wants to give a, their definition of commitment? Okay, so you keep thinking about that. I do it because I have to do it. Making a pact with myself to complete something. Okay, yeah, making a pact with myself to complete. Ramona, that's a good answer. Giving your word, exactly. Giving your word. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna see a formula you're going to say, so what is this formula about commitment? That will make things easier, though. Uh, going through with a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Going through with a plan. OK. So I'm going to share my screen again with you. And you're going to see a formula. It's not a mathematical formula, but it is still a formula. Let's see. There you go. Can you see my screen? Okay, so commitment formula. It has three parts. When we make a commitment, it has to be very tiny, thin sliced. So, an uh, example, we cannot call it a commitment if I say, I'm going to live a healthy life. Too broad. Too broad. For a commitment to be strong, so you can follow through, it has to have a triggering situation. For example, I have a bad habit, let's say, when at the end of the day, I just at five o'clock shut down my computer and leave. The next morning when I come in again, now I'm all in this hurry, oh my God, which meetings I have, oh, do I, do I need to prepare anything for this meeting? All going on. So I want to change this bad habit. The triggering uh, situation is every morning, uh, at the end of my where, where, where I, morning, at the end of the day, when I finish my work, that is the situation. At the end of the day, when I finish my work, that is the triggering event. Every day when that time comes, that will trigger you. Instead of you're going to put your old habit. Instead of shutting down and going back, uh, going home or getting out of my office, I will, I'm going to, you're going to put the new habit. I'm going to stay for a couple minutes more, check the next day's schedule, and make sure that I will be ready for um, the next day's meetings and all that. Is that clear how it is so tiny? Okay, another example. I was working with a group of uh, salespeople and especially in this virtual environment, um, it is so hard for them to talk with their clients only on the phone and sell instead of face-to-face. -face. They're struggling with that. So one big habit we wanted them and they are not asking their questions right they're just jumping into conversations. They are not listening well. It is all over the place. So we just said, okay, there's one behavior that really hurts their relationship with their customers. And this is when they're on the phone with their clients. That is the triggering situation. When they're on the phone with their customer. When I'm on the phone with my customer, I'm writing a commitment. Instead of just jumping in, and without listening, giving them solutions and giving them answers, I'm going to ask one more question to understand their real need. Old habit, jumping in, giving solutions, not listening and understanding what they really need. The new habit is stopping, asking one more questions, understanding them. And the triggering event, anytime when I'm on the phone with my customer. When I'm explaining these examples, please reflect to the one old habit you wrote on your paper that you want to change and how you can write a commitment fitting it into this formula. Does it make sense? Is it doable? I can't see everybody, so. Okay, 
so that is our that is our uh, commitment formula. If you want, you can uh, you can take a note of it. The situation, old habit, new habit. If you want to make it more mathematical, I like it better sometimes. When X happens, instead of Y, I'm going to do Z. That is basically what the formula is about. Okay, let's stop sharing this. Okay. When we come to, if we want to wrap this up uh, slowly, we just talked about three big things actually. And I'm going to give you an acronym for that. For that. And maybe I'm gonna share again. And the acronym is A for action, B for behavior and habit, and C is commitment. A, B, C. If you remember this today when you leave here, you're gonna remember the whole thing actually. Guess what? When we say action, what part did we talk about that will fit into action category? Being self-aware, finding our passion and purpose, right? And then being self-aware, knowing our limitations, knowing our capabilities, and then looking at our toolbox and assessing our tools in that toolbox, and then making a list of priorities that will take us from point A to point B. In other words, to our purpose. That is the action part, A, it's a big A. But putting our systems in place is part of action too. But if you do not change your habits, behaviors, those systems, whatever you build up will not work. So you need your behaviors, habits change or develop new ones. To be able to develop strong behaviors, you need to make good commitments, which is your C. So if you do your ABC, you will be able to Find your passion, reach your purpose, have your systems in place, work as a high performer, and create those habits, behaviors that will make your life way easier. You have two post-its. One is about to remind you your purpose and passion and purpose. And the other will get you through when you need confidence. I think you have all the tools now. And I can very comfortably say, you can break down the mountains if you want, rock by rock. Thank you. Jordan, thank you for that uh, uh, um, collection of pieces of common sense that in aggregate uh, can change lives. And when we change lives, uh, well, wow, what, a, uh, what a, a worthy way to live. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you very much. And thank you for attending and sharing your thoughts. That was, that was very valuable. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, everybody. Beautiful. Now we've got a couple of minutes. Uh, if you have any questions for Nurdan that you'd like to pose them into the chat, or if you feel so moved, feel free to unmute and just uh, just speak them out. Because I have some offering and an offering. If you ask your questions and when it is done, I'm going to talk about what is next. I'm planning. And if you want to come along with me, then we're going to do that. Uh, Nurdan, we're not getting any questions, but we are. Perfect. But you are getting a lot of appreciation, a lot of thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, what is going to happen now? Now you have that commitment written. The new habits can form if you do it regularly, every day, persistently. The new habits will form between twenty to thirty, forty days. They will start building. So be patient. Don't give up. 
It's not going to happen overnight. So I will give the um, option to you. It's not mandatory if you want to. Uh, send me an email saying that I want to change. I want to build a new habit. I will gather those emails. I will give you 30 days to work on your commitment. Every day, you're going to put a reminder on your phone and you are going to say, at the end of the day, when your phone rings or gives that chin chin to you, you're gonna say, oh, how did I do with my commitment today? And you're gonna assess yourself. It doesn't matter, let's say between one to 10. It doesn't matter if you assess yourself two or three. The important thing is at the end of 30 day, if you were feeling like two at the beginning and if you come up to five, six, that is the game. It doesn't matter the numbers, the change is important. So you're gonna keep the record of that. And when we get together after 30 days, when I get the emails, I'm gonna send you a meeting invite to that group. When we get back together 30 days after, I'm going to ask you how your commitment went. Where were the barriers? What stopped you practicing it? Or what helped you doing it? One more reality, one more fact I want to share. When we make commitments, if we have accountability buddies, it will make it easier to have that commitment turn into a behavior a friend, somebody from the family, a colleague, just telling them, hey, you know what? I made this uh, commitment and I will be doing this 30 days. So let me know if you see me slipping back to my old habit or just encourage me when you see that, oh my God, you are really doing this different. That is a big power. I'm leaving it that with you too. But if you want to join, one step further to talk about these commitments. This is my kind of, uh, for this group, I want to do it. And it's a complimentary and other group coaching we can do. You have my, uh, you have my uh, email. Let yep. me find out. It's all in here. It's all in there. Okay, I was both, gonna both, share the screen your again. your email and your phone number. Okay, perfect. So, um, and you can send me your commitments if you want to check if they are built fine, built properly. I can even answer those. Because this is so critical to get the essence of it, understanding it. And then from there on, you will go by yourself and do your habit changes. Okay. Erdan, thank you once more. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for your emails if you want to. It's not a must. It's up to you. You're Thank very you. kind. You're welcome. So I've stopped recording now. Uh, uh, are there?